Three lives, three worlds, lotus steps. Wherever step goes, lotus blooms. Divine prayer. By Tang Chi English translated using Google. Lotus Step Chapter 32, Book 2. To the north of the northern wilderness, there is a nameless swamp covering thousands of miles, which is the molting place for the birds of the eight wildernesses. The sky and the earth are empty, and in the vast snowy swamp, there will occasionally be one or two long and joyful cries of spiritual birds that have successfully molted, accompanied by the long cries. The old feathers of birds fall with the flying snowflakes above the swamp, with a bit of sad poetry, adds a different tone to this quiet place of ice and snow. Ching Yu stood at the northernmost point of days, looking up at the distant mountains lying on the horizon like giant beasts. This morning, when she was asking for directions on the bank of days, a choming bird that had just changed its new feathers and was in a good mood told her that the mountain in front of her was the Arctic Tiangue Mountain, where the third highness of the celestial clan she was looking for was. To be tortured at the second peak of the mountain, she could just walk straight north. With her mortal footsteps, she should be able to get there by traveling nonstop for four or five days and nights. Ching Yu heard Zhu Jin mention the Chongming bird. It was said to be a kind of righteous divine bird, and everyone in the family had an honest temperament. She expected that it would not lie to her. After looking at the majestic distant mountains for a while, Cheng Yu tightened his cloak and braved the wind and snow, following the guidance of the birds, and headed north. Why the mortal princess appeared in the northern wilderness of the fairy world is a long story. After three consecutive departures from the Xiaojie realm that day, the imperial master and Tian Bu also led Cheng Yu out of the small world and back to Ping'an City. The Third Highness split the earth and created the sea at the border of Shiwu. Although there were earthquakes and landslides, His Highness sacrificed the suppressing fan at that time. The double deer golden wheels produced by the suppressing fan protected the entire continent. As for except for the Kaisha River, where the earth was shaking and the mountains were shaking, places outside the Gobi were quite quiet. Not to mention Ping'an City, which is thousands of miles away, it is in the capital of Wunuosa King, which is a hundred miles away. No one has any special feelings, but they woke up early the next morning and heard about last night's news from the returning bridegrooming team. The dragon appeared, not only snatched the bride of the fourth prince, but also created a sea between Wunuosu and Xichao to cut off the communication between the two countries, causing Wunuosu to transform from a plateau landlocked country to a country overnight. Linhai Country The people were shocked by this. After being shocked, they thought that from now on they would be able to eat seafood without any discomfort, and they were all quite happy. Pingan City got the news a little later. General Li Ji killed several bloody horses and was able to rush back to Ping'an City within five days. It turned out that the general was a god descended to earth. In order to prevent the princess from getting married, he actually created a sea at the border. Unfortunately, the general ran out of efforts to build the sea. Then the imperial advisor took the princess and the general away together and reported to the emperor that the whereabouts of the three of them are still unknown. As a normal person, Cheng Yun's first reaction was, of course, that General Li had gone crazy and pulled him down and locked him up for five days. As a result, early on the fifth day, the sheriff of Ji County also arrived on horseback. It turned out that the crime was the same, so General Li was released. Cheng Yun was doubtful and sent his confidant Bob Bailey to rush to Jiangwe Desert for on-the-spot investigation. Ten days later, his confidant returned a new border map. Cheng Yun opened it and found that there was indeed an extra sea on the northern border. Horizontally, it not only separated Dashi and Wunuosu, but also completely separated Beiwei. From now on, the three countries can only see each. Other across the sea, and they can't see each other. You must know that Dashi has been at odds with the northern way for more than 200 years since its founding. Every aspiring emperor has regarded killing the Northern Way as his lifelong pursuit, and Cheng Yun is no exception. However, after Lian San did this, the two countries were facing each other across the sea, and no one could do anything to the other. This made Cheng Yun suddenly lose his goal, and he was confused and felt a sense of emptiness. Several important ministers, equal to the left and right, 
accompanied the emperor to discuss matters. They had a better understanding of the current situation. What the adults meant was that the emperor did not have to be so empty. The geographical situation had changed, and the national policy had to change accordingly. There was still a lot of work to do next. Besides, they had to explain to the people what was going on with the sea on the border. At the same time, they had to find the general to confirm his next steps and see if he planned to continue being their general or return to heaven and become a god. Several important ministers of the country have been discussing things for a lifetime, but they have never discussed anything so unbelievable. After finishing these words, everyone felt in a daze. It was under such circumstances that the imperial master brought Cheng Yu back to Pingan City. After more than a month of settling and buffering, Cheng Yun became relatively calm when he saw the imperial master again. At this time, the news of a new sea on the border spread throughout Dashi. Rumors abounded, both good and bad. There was an urgent need for the imperial master to come back and clear up the source. As a master of nonsense, the imperial master did not disappoint everyone's expectations. On that day, he assisted the emperor to tell the world that the Chang dynasty was appointed by heaven and it was the destiny of heaven. God sent the water god to assist the king. The water god was benevolent. The battle of Shiwe caused the people to be displaced, and they couldn't bear it, so they diverted the water from the South Ocean into the desert, creating a 10,000-foot deep sea across the Shiwe. This was to isolate the Shi dynasty from foreign invaders and protect the people of Dashi from the disaster of war forever. The emperor was grateful for the benevolence of the water god, so he specially dedicated the Red Jade Princess, the royal family's treasure, to the water god as his wife. From then on, the great Shi dynasty regarded the water god as the revered god and hoped that thousands of families would worship the water god and feast on the water god with good faith and sincerity. As soon as the edict came out, the rumors stopped. The people discovered that there really was a god in the world, and as a citizen of Dashi, they were actually the favored son of the god. They were very excited and built statues and temples to worship the water god. The imperial preceptor handled this matter properly. Yu Gong beautifully cleaned up the mess left by His Highness the Third Highness and also successfully gave the water god's creation of the sea an unparalleled political significance. The status of the Third Highness and the princess was fulfilled openly and honestly in front of others. I believe this is what the Third Highness wants to see. The imperial master was very proud of this. Every time he thought about it, he couldn't help but praise me in his heart. I'm awesome. Those who know the truth, from the emperor to Tianbu, also think that the imperial master is quite good. In the entire dynasty, there was only one person who did not think the imperial preceptor was a bad person. This person was Princess Yanlan, who had been forcibly sent back to Pingan City by the imperial preceptor and had developed a grudge against the imperial preceptor at that time. On the day when Princess Yanlan came to question her, it happened that Cheng Yu was also having tea in the Imperial Preceptor's mansion. Yanlan originally wanted to question the Imperial Preceptor about why he messed up the Yuanyang book and instigated the Emperor to promise Cheng Yu to Lian San. However, when he stepped into the mansion and saw Cheng Yu was also there, he immediately forgot his hatred towards the Imperial Preceptor and became angry. She turned around and turned towards Cheng Yu, her eyes fixed on the cousin she thought would never return to the capital again in her lifetime. Aren't you very proud that he did this for you? In Cheng Yu's memory, the 19th Princess Yan Lan had always been graceful and courteous, showing herself to others with a weak and gentle face. Sometimes she was quite hypocritical, but if she didn't use words to provoke her, she could usually maintain that kind of hypocrisy perfectly. In the end, but today's 19th princess is very different. She is so aggressive as soon as she comes up, which is amazing. She raised her eyebrows slightly, put down her teacup, and smiled lightly. I don't understand what sister 19th princess said. I wonder where it comes from. Yemon held the armrests of the wheelchair with all her strength. Don't be so pretentious in front of me. Aren't you very proud at this moment that His Highness the Third Highness blatantly violated the laws of the Nine Heavens and split the earth and created the sea for you? She has never been stupid. Even the relationship between Song and Cheng Yu, it's not that she couldn't understand the entanglement. 
Although she had never seen what happened by the Kaiser River that night, but after a moment of careful consideration, she knew that it was definitely not what the Imperial Master said. She couldn't accept that the aloof Third Highness would do that for a mortal. Pain and hatred rose from the bottom of her heart and penetrated deep into her bones, making her unable to control herself. Don't think that he really loves you like this. He is loving you right now. Tightening you is just so new. He is that kind of person. When he is interested in you, he is willing to do anything for you. So what does it mean to break the earth into a sea? Didn't he also give everything to Changi at that time? Seeing the girl lowering her eyes slightly, the mask-like smile on her face quickly faded. Yenlan finally gained some pleasure and smiled with a twisted face. Brother Huang said that he would dedicate you to him. You really do do you think you are the wife of the water god? He looked maliciously at the expressionless girl behind the tea banquet. Oh, wife of the water god, you are immortal. Do you deserve it? If I am not worthy, the girl raised her eyes lightly, still expressionless. Then the emperor is worthy? The emperor keeps saying she looks down on mortals. Isn't the emperor just a mortal like me? Of course, he is not a pure mortal. Hearing Chen Yu ask such ignorant words, Yen Lan laughed happily for the first time after days of suffering. She spread her hands and said, This body is indeed a mortal body at this time, but you are forgot. My previous life was the flower master Chang'e. I came to the mortal world just to survive the tribulation. Sooner or later, I have to go back to Jiotian to re-enter the immortal class. I have always been different from you. She leaned forward slightly. Her expression there was undisguised contempt in it, and he said word by word, You are not worthy to be compared with me. These words were originally intended to humiliate Chen Yu, but when they were spoken, they miraculously comforted herself. Yes, it doesn't matter if His Highness the Third Prince likes Cheng Yu at this time, but he is just a mortal like an ant. It is impossible for him to be with His Highness for a long time. She just needs to be patient and be more patient. However, the girl did not show an expression of humiliation. Instead, she picked up the teacup calmly and said, Sister Huang, do you think you can go back to the ninth heaven? Yanlan was stunned. What do you mean? Chang Yu curled her lips. Didn't Brother Lian San mention it to the Emperor that Chang Yi committed a capital crime by breaking into the demon locking tower without permission? He had already been expelled from the immortal status. In fact, he could never go back to the nine heavens to become an immortal. Really? Seeing the shock on Yanlan's face, she took a sip of tea unhurriedly. Brother Lian San was thinking about having a fight with his colleague Chang Yi before, and he still wanted to try his best to bring you back to reincarnation. It comes from heaven, but it seems that because the temperament of the reincarnated you is too different from that of Chang Yi, so he changed his mind and thought it would be good to let you be immortal. Yan Lan's whole body froze, and he froze in the wheelchair with a white face. After a long while, he said in a hoarse voice, This is absolutely impossible. What's wrong with being immortal? Why is the 19th princess so unacceptable? Cheng Yu held her chin with one hand, raised her eyes to look at Yen Lan, half smiling. Is it because if you are just a pure person like me? As for ordinary mortals, the 19th princess can no longer find any sense of superiority in front of me. Is that right? Yen Lan was trembling with anger, and her lips trembled. You, you bitch. He grabbed the stove on his lap and threw it towards Cheng Yu. As a result, Gua, who was huddled aside and drank tea silently as much as possible to minimize his presence. The master raised his hand and cast a spell to stop it. The hand stove shattered with a bang in the middle. Yan Lan was silenced by the Imperial Preceptor, holding his throat and looking at the Imperial Preceptor in disbelief. The Imperial Master also frowned and looked at Yen Lan. It's okay for everyone to talk nicely. Princess, you spoke so rudely and then used your hands. Isn't this a bit too much? Since His Highness the Third Prince fell in love with Chen Yu, Yen Lan, she was a little crazy. She cried, made trouble, and hanged herself over this matter. The Imperial Master had also seen it before, so when he saw her, his scalp went numb. He originally planned to hide as far away as possible, but Chen Yu was not a vegetarian, so he did not afraid of the mist. We must face the enemy head on. What can the Imperial Preceptor do? The Imperial Preceptor has no choice but to stay. 
At this time, the Imperial Master was really glad that he stayed. He faced the palace maid standing beside Yenlon and said with a solemn face, What are you still doing? Princess Yenlon has a sore throat and is uncomfortable. Why don't you hurry up and get the princess? Carry him back to the palace for medical treatment. Even though the Imperial Master is just a junior in front of His Highness the Third Highness, he has always walked sideways in the Imperial Court. The palace maids were frightened when they were scolded by the Imperial Master. They did not dare to neglect and immediately carried the smoke to leave the flower hall. Yenlon couldn't speak. She turned sideways and held the back of the wheelchair tightly, glaring at the two of them with an angry look, her eyes burning red with anger. Seeing Yen Lan's appearance, Cheng Yi raised his eyebrows and suddenly said, Wait a minute. Then he slowly stood up from behind the tea banquet, walked close to Yen Lan, lowered his eyes slightly, and lifted up some of his sleeves, caressing the silver chain on her wrist casually. Sister Huang Kai advised me not to believe Brother Lian San just because he did something for me. He really loves me because he also gave everything to Cheng Yi. She smiled slightly and said, Sister Wang's words are not entirely true. Even the third brother did not give everything to Chang'e. After all, it represents his only sincere Anai Lin. He did not give it to Chang'e, but to me. As Chang Yu's words fell, Yen Lan suddenly looked at her wrist, as if her whole body was frozen, except for one of her eyes, which was shining with disbelief, moving from the silver chain between her wrist to the one on her fingers. Ring, and then seemed to finally react, moving his gaze inch by inch to Ching Yu's neck and earlobes. She stared at the silver and red ornaments, her eyes were about to burst, and her lips were trembling. Although she could not make a sound, Cheng Yu could see what she was saying. How could you have it? How could you deserve it? Cheng Yu looked at Yen Long calmly, Looking at Sister 19, you should also know the meaning of Nilin. So you should understand that whether you agree or disagree, Brother Lian San has indeed become my husband, that is, your cousin-in-law. I hope that the Imperial Sister will take care of the royal family's face and respect herself from now on. Yanlan's eyes were still on Ching Yu's neck, her face turned pale, as if she had been hit hard. Then she seemed to be stung by the soft silver-red light, she closed her eyes suddenly, and then her whole body slumped. He fell into the wheelchair, covered his face with his hands, and cried silently. Yen Lan left the Imperial Preceptor's mansion without any image. After returning to the palace, he smashed a room full of things. Then he fell ill and was bedridden for almost two months. Chin Yu didn't know that she had made Yen Lan sick. During those days, she was busy working in Sherwa building and had no time to care about things outside the building. Zhu Jin, Li Xiang, Yao Huang, and Ziyu and had already returned to Sherwa Tower, so when the Imperial Master sent Ching Yu back to the building, she immediately joined them. Everyone was happy, and while everyone was so happy, Cheng Yu ran to Zhu Jin and tremblingly explained her agreement with Lian San and her determination to surrender to Jing Chen. I originally thought that I would have to get at least a beating to deal with Zhu Jin, but I didn't expect that the chief manager was actually very talkative this time and just asked her to arrange things in the building for the next seven years. There is nothing easy to arrange for this matter, just leave it all to Zhu Jin. After all, it has always been done this way in the past, and if she does not cause trouble to Zhu Jin, it will be considered as a contribution to the management of Sherwa building. Thinking about the next seven years, she will be sleeping all the time and will never cause trouble to Ju Jin again. Chang Yu feels a little emotional. Ever since the day she learned to go to Fang Jiawa without a teacher, Ju Jin must have been looking forward to today. Come. Chin Yu spent half a month having a farewell banquet with friends in the capital, and another half month chatting with every flower and tree in the building to say goodbye, and then found a zodiac. Ji Yi piously opened the brocade box that Lian San left for her, ready to accept Ji Chen and wait for the seven year appointment with Lian San. But what is unexpected is that the brocade box is empty and the pills are missing. A group of people from Shawalu searched everywhere for three months, but could not find where the pills were lost. 
Seeing that the search was hopeless, Ching Yu had no choice but to accept the reality that Jingchen was lost and would never be found again, and then spent half a year in a daze. For half a year, the formerly bright girl suffered from lovesickness, just like a flower that bloomed in the wrong season. Although she was growing hard and tenaciously in order not to cause worries, due to the lack of suitable sunlight, without water, growth is painful, slow, and difficult. Seeing the girl withering away under the mask of a forced smile, even the hard-hearted Jew hibiscus couldn't bear it. After some consideration, he offered to take her to the world where the gods lived to find Lian San. Ju Jin did what he said, and soon he led her to the Ruoma gate that separated the divine realm from the mortal world. However, in the process of passing through the Ruomi gate, she was disturbed by a sudden storm, and she and Ju Hibiscus were unfortunately separated. After waking up, she was the only one lying next to the northern wasteland where spiritual birds molt, but Ju Hibiscus was there. Missing. The petals in the kit are still fresh, indicating that Ju Hibiscus is fine, which makes Chinyu relieved. She has never been the kind of soft-hearted and weak-minded woman. She has to have someone to protect her before she dares to venture into a strange world. He thought calmly for a moment and felt that the world was vast. According to Zhu Jin's usual behavior, if he couldn't find her, he would most likely go directly to the place where Lian San was punished to wait for her, so he immediately made the decision to look for Lian San first. Fortunately, His Highness the Third Highness is indeed very famous in this world, and with a little inquiry, you can find out where he is. When Chong Mingmyo told her that it would take her five days and nights to reach the place where Lian San was tortured, Chang Yu was not afraid of this long journey at all, but immediately made a mental calculation. Lian San will be punished. She was tortured there for seven days, but she worked harder and could get there within five days, which meant that she would definitely be able to find him and see him. It's not that she hasn't thought about the many dangers she may encounter in this mortal body in this land where gods, demons, and ghosts are rampant, but as long as she thinks that she will see her brother Lian San soon, she is not afraid at all. Full of courage to move forward. She has always been that girl who is as innocent and brave as an eagle, and as strong and fearless as a tiger cub. In the thousands-mile ice field of Tiangui Mountain in the Arctic, the cold wind howls and the freezing snow rages. Eu saw the woman at the foot of the first peak of Tiangui. In the falling snow, the woman stood quietly at the foot of the mountain wearing a snow-white cloak. The ankle-length cloak completely covered the woman's body, but it could not cover up her ice-cold and delicate charm. The sky and the earth are white, and the back is also white, standing elegantly and quietly, poetic and picturesque. Eu is also a woman, and a beautiful woman. She is not interested in women. She couldn't take her eyes away from the woman's figure, because she looked like an immortal, but at a glance, she could tell that she was just a mortal, and a pure mortal at that. More than 200,000 years ago, after God Shawan sent the human race to the mortal world, there were indeed some small mortal countries left in the Eight Wastes, but the so-called mortals in those small countries were just mixed blood with human blood. It stands to reason that it is absolutely impossible for a pure mortal to appear in these eight desolate worlds, and he still appears in this desolate Arctic Tiangue mountain. You must know that since His Highnesses began to be tortured here five days ago, the two generals who were guarding the second peak cleared the seven peaks of the Heavenly Cabinet to ensure that during His Highness's torture, there would be no living creatures or animals nearby creatures. Yes, Eu herself is a living creature, a living creature, and logically she shouldn't be here, but this is what makes her feel proud. She is an exception recognized by the two heavenly generals. Eu is a tail fish who lives in Beihai. She is the most beloved daughter of the leader of the Lingyu tribe. Before His Highness Sang Ji was demoted to Lord of Beihai Si for trespassing into the demon locking tower, there was no Lord of Water in Beihai. The general affairs in Beihai were always temporarily represented by Eu's father, so her father was also regarded as an old subordinate of His Highness the Third Highness. His Highness the Third Prince will come to patrol Beihai every ten years. When the leader of the Lingyu tribe accompanies His Highness the Third Highness on a sea patrol, he always brings a few of his children with him to practice. 
There is always Eu among those children, so among the many little Lingius who come and go, his highness also recognizes her. I can call her by name. The young divine king was a powerful and handsome young man. The most charming thing about him was his desolate and lonely temperament, which made Eu fall into unrequited love as soon as he became sensible. Even though he lived in the remote Beihai, Eu had heard many rosy rumors about his highness. For example, his highness was romantic and cherished beauty. If he was really a stunning beauty and fell in love with his highness, he would have the opportunity to go to UNG Palace to accompany you. Eu is recognized as the most beautiful woman in Beihai. She thinks that she is indeed unusually beautiful and should be qualified to take a place in UNG Palace. Therefore, she has been waiting for His Highness the Third Prince to come again since she has grown up. Patrolling the North Sea, I would like to take this opportunity to express my feelings to His Highness. It's a pity that since the Second Highness Sang Ji became the Lord of Beihai Sea, the Third Highness has never visited Beihai again. Eu was very depressed about this for a while, but suddenly he heard that His Highness had violated the laws of the Nine Heavens and came to the North Pole Tiangue Mountain to be punished. Naturally, she couldn't miss this opportunity to see His Highness the Third Highness. She hurried to the second peak, but was blocked by the barrier set up by the general who was guarding there. Her friend Hiluoyu Shaosan was well informed and helped her come up with an idea. Although the seven peaks of Tiangue were blocked by the Tianjing barrier, the water in the South Bay of the North Sea was not blocked by the barrier. What is blocked will flow to the seven peaks of the Sky Cabinet every day. The sea water flowing into the second peak will form a cold waterfall that will punish His Highness the Third. If she hides in the water of the South Bay, the water pouring back may be able to send her to His Highness. However, there are certain risks in this attempt. Danger. Eu has been spoiled since he was a child and has a temperament that is not afraid of anything, so he hid in the water of Nan on that night. It was indeed a dangerous adventure. When dawn was about to break, the calm water flow in South Bay suddenly became violent. Before she could react, she was swept into a huge water column and was swept up by an unknown force and rushed up to the second peak of Tiangue. Peak. In extreme panic, she could only vaguely see that the place where she was about to fall was the bottom of a deep cliff. Hiluoyu called her name in panic again and again on the edge of the South Bay. Eu, Eu. As far as the eye could see, she was so close to death. At that moment, she couldn't tell whether she felt more regretful or more fearful. She could only shiver and close her eyes tightly. At the end of the weightless fall, the expected pain did not come. When she opened her eyes, she found herself enveloped in a warm silver light, and a cold voice sounded not far ahead. Your name is Eu? The silver light disappeared, and Eu recovered from the shock, rubbed her eyes, and looked at where the sound came from, and then she froze there. A huge waterfall hangs close to the cliff and rushes into the pool at the bottom of the cliff. There is a huge boulder in the pool. On the boulder, the hands of the young man in white are bound by iron chains, and he is imprisoned in the endless waterfall. The current covered the young man's face, and only a vague figure could be seen, but the figure was still tall and majestic. Even if he was treated like this, he didn't look embarrassed at all. Eu knew that this was the Third Highness, so he got up and stumbled closer to the pool, murmuring, Your Highness. Your Highness, don't you remember me? I am Eu the little fish girl of the Lingyu tribe. The young man's eyes passed through the waterfall and fell on her. After a moment, he said lightly, Oh, that little fish from the North Sea. Eu was about to answer excitedly, It's me, when the sound of wind and thunder suddenly came from the top of the cliff. She quickly looked up and found that the waterfall on the cliff, which was still flowing at a normal speed, suddenly became turbulent. The rushing water rushed towards the young man with a turbulent force. When she got close to the young man, the invisible flowing water suddenly it turned into a tangible blade and slashed neatly on the young man's back. Eu screamed in surprise, but the young man in the waterfall seemed to not feel the pain of the water blade hitting his body. 
Ayu didn't hear him let out even a groan of pain, but the iron chains binding the young man's hands sometimes relaxed and sometimes tightened, and the impact caused to there were some noises, revealing that the young man did not really have any feelings. The blade turned into flowing water, slashed at the young man one after another. It was so real that Ayu felt very scary. The punishment lasted for a full hour before stopping. When the punishment was over, Ayu plucked up the courage to go into the waterfall to see his highness's injuries, but found that he couldn't go in at all. He was even scolded by his highness, who woke up from the pain. What are you doing? What? Ayu whispered, I want to see how you are injured. Your highness, are you okay? The third highness ignored her concern and only said, Go to the two generals outside the valley. They can help you return to Beihai. Ayu suddenly panicked and immediately knelt down. Your Highness also knows that we, the Lingyu clan, must repay favors received from others, let alone when I fell. Your Highness is my life-saving grace. Your Highness is being tortured here. I have limited mobility, and these few days I can be Your Highness's legs and feet, and go find some pain-relieving medicine for Your Highness. Your Highness, please grant me your gratitude and don't drive me away. Ayu made a good entry point, saying that he wanted to repay a favor, and the Lingyu tribe did have this tradition. His highness stopped arguing with her and just let her do whatever she wanted. The two garden gods at Taniguchi are very clever gods. They know that his highness is both the favorite of the heavenly king and the emperor. Deep down, they want to make things easier for him. However, as the executioners, they go to find a way for his highness. The pain medicine didn't seem to be a big deal, so he was naturally happy to have a little Lingyu who volunteered and took the initiative to turn a blind eye to her, allowing her to go out of the barrier to find some pain medicine to relieve the pain for his highness. Although Ayu felt that the third highness was cold, she also knew that he had always been like that, and his being so cold and indifferent made her even more fascinated. She felt that her adventure was really wise, and the beginning between her and his highness was even more wonderful and romantic. The hero saves the beauty, the beauty repays the favor, takes care of the hero before he is sick, and then the two fall in love. This is what the books that the sisters like to read are written like this. The proud and arrogant Xiao Lingyu firmly believes that given time, he will be able to capture the heart of His Highness the Third, and they will become an enviable couple in this world. Ayu was just thinking to himself when the woman a few feet away on the ice field suddenly turned around. Ayu came back to his senses and looked at the woman again. Rather than the woman's appearance, the first thing she noticed was that there was a little silver and red light shining in the green hair in the woman's ears. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be a pair of earrings. The shape of the earring is ordinary silver wire wrapped with ruby, but the silver wire is much more dazzling than the light of ordinary silver metal when reflected by the snow light, and the silver light is also surrounded by a layer of light. The seven-colored light is like a rainbow after rain. Eu is from the Water Tribe, so he naturally understands that it is the light that silver dragon scales can have, and the dragon scales worn as accessories on a woman are most likely a marriage proposal from a certain dragon king. Her pupils shrank suddenly. The woman's eyes fell on her, she took a few steps closer, and with some curiosity, she spoke first. Is the girl a fairy or a demon? Eu's gaze turned slightly to the woman's face. The woman's appearance caught his eye, and Ayu's mind went blank. A woman from the Lingyu tribe values beauty and respects it. It is precisely because of her beauty that she has been loved by her father since she was a child. However, this mortal woman in front of her actually has a face that is more beautiful than hers. If the woman were an immortal, out of Lingyu's instinct, she would immediately be frightened. But the woman was just immortal, and the fear turned into hatred and fear, deeply piercing Ayu's heart. Ayu was gloomy in his heart, but had a sweet smile on his face. Why do you ask? So what if I am a fairy? What if I am a demon? The woman played with a jade ring in her hand. I heard that most of the people living in this northern wasteland are immortals and demons. Immortals are kind-hearted and willing to help others selflessly, while demons, although they also help others, need to bring things with them. Change, so I just want to know what kind of girl she is. 
A mortal could be so neither humble nor arrogant in the face of gods, which made Eu even more unhappy, but she still had a deliberate smile on her face to make people lower their guard. The wife of the Dragon King will also encounter people who need help. Problem? I wonder what the problem is. The woman was stunned for a moment, then stroked the earrings next to her ears, showing a look of helplessness, and smiled. Whether it's an immortal or a demon, everyone should be able to see that I'm just immortal. It's a difficult problem for me. It should be very simple for Miss Yu. She turned her face and glanced at the snow-capped mountains in front of her. I want to climb this mountain. I wonder if I can ask Miss to help me with this? The woman did not deny that she was the wife of the Dragon King. And over this mountain is the bottom of the second peak, where the third highness was tortured. Although Eu had already guessed in her mind, her eyelids jumped when she heard the woman say it in person, and the smile on her face was almost unbearable. You are the third princess. After all, she could not say the word wife. He suppressed the jealousy in his heart and pretended to be surprised. Are you actually here to see his? Highness? The woman nodded. His nails dug into the palms of his hands, but Eu had a very innocent expression on his face. Although I am an immortal, if you want my help, you still need to exchange something. The woman nodded calmly. This is as it should be. What does the girl want me to exchange for? Eu tilted his head and looked at the woman, raising his eyebrows slightly. I think your pair of earrings is very good. The woman's eyes changed slightly, and her face slowly showed alertness. She took two steps back and said, I can't give it to you. The woman's alertness angered Eu, and she smiled coldly. Don't want to give it to me? It's not up to you. After saying that, she flew up and used her five fingers to form claws, trying to rip the earring off the woman's earlobe. But before she could get close, a circle of extremely dazzling seven, colored light suddenly erupted around the woman, causing her to fall three feet away from the earthquake. Eu fell to the ground angrily. That turned out to be Dragon Lord's reverse scale. The Dragon King proposes marriage with the reverse scale, and the one who holds the reverse scale is the Dragon King's wife, and the reverse scale is also a talisman, which will protect the holder from being hurt by other people's attacks. But this ancient ritual and the equally ancient protective spells that accompany it have not appeared in the world for many thousands of years. So... Did His Highness really let a mortal become his wife? Is this why he was punished? Eu was so angry that he vomited blood. This mortal must let her die. How can a mortal be worthy of being the wife of His Highness the Third? Suddenly, she had a new idea. She stood up and patted the snow powder on her body. Suppressing the resentment in her eyes, she pretended not to care and sneered softly, stingy, a mortal, all over the body. It's just that the pair of earrings are a thing of the immortal family and can be admired by others. If you don't want to part with it, then just climb up the mountain by yourself. He glanced sideways at the woman and added, This place is deserted all year round and there are few living creatures. Besides me, you can't wait for anyone else to do this for you. Think about it yourself. The woman lowered her eyes slightly, as if thinking. After a while, she whispered softly, Thank you for reminding me, girl. I cannot give you this earring. It seems that I am the only one who tried to climb up. The woman still didn't want to give her earrings, but that didn't matter. It was never Eu's purpose to take the pair of earrings as her own. At first, she just wanted to verify whether they were his highness's reverse earrings. After getting the answer that made her jealous and hateful, she just wanted to lure the woman to take the earrings. Take off the dragon scales and kill her. But the woman refused to take off the dragon scales, so it would be the same to tempt her to climb the mountain. Dragon scales can only block other people's direct attacks on the holder, but if this mortal puts herself in danger, no matter how powerful the dragon scales are, they cannot save her. Tiangoi Mountain is extremely dangerous, let alone immortal. Even Eu would find it difficult to climb up step by step. Of course, when she returned to the second peak, she never climbed up step by step, but rode the snowy wind. Eu glanced disdainfully at the woman's back as she headed towards the foot of the mountain, then looked up at the steep snow-capped mountains in front of her and thought happily, the mountain on the first peak is so steep. 
Create some obstacles for this mortal while she's climbing and kill her. It should be very easy. Although Chang Yu is a good mountain climber, she also knows that she is a mortal and it is unwise to try to climb this tall fairy mountain by herself. The seven peaks of Tiangue are indeed a land of ice and snow, with no grass growing within a hundred miles. Even if she takes down Shisheng, she will not be able to find any flowers or trees in the hundred miles of consciousness sea to find out more information about this mountain. In fact, the safest way at this time is to wait at the foot of the mountain. In this way, even if Lian San will not pass by this place when he returns to Juchangshan after his punishment, Ju Hibiscus should be able to find this place, and then Ju Hibiscus will lead her to find Lian San. The chance of successfully finding someone will be greater. Cheng Yu knew rationally what a better approach would be, but when she thought that her sweetheart was only separated from her by a mountain, she couldn't control herself and wanted to give it a try immediately. Give it a try? What if she climbs up? If it was really too dangerous to climb up, it wouldn't be too late for her to retreat. She thought. Cheng Yu deserves to be called the young master who spent his childhood exploring the secrets of the mountains. It is remarkable that an ordinary woman can overcome the freezing snow and cross the foothills where the flat ground meets the slope. But in less than half a day, she not only crossed the foothills, they also climbed a large gentle slope smoothly and did not stop until they reached the mountainside where the slope suddenly became extremely steep. Chang Yu looked up at the steep slope that needed to be conquered next and found that although the slope was steep, the snow covering it was not very thick and the rocks in many places were exposed, just right for people to climb up. The cloak was too heavy and would be inconvenient for the rest of the journey. She took off the cloak, tore off two pieces of silk cloth from the lining of her skirt and tied them to her hands. After making simple preparations, she began to climb the nearest rock. Everything went smoothly, and she saw that she had conquered one-third of the karst landform. Suddenly, a red light flashed, and the rock she had just stepped on to borrow strength suddenly became loose. Chang Yu missed his footing and fell down suddenly, rolling down the slope uncontrollably. When he reached the steepest point, he was stopped by a long rock. She fainted for a while and looked down with a sore back. She was suddenly shocked, the smooth, gentle slope covered with snow was now densely covered with long knives. When the snow light shone, countless sharp blades were facing her as if they were thirsty. Bloody beast's teeth. Before Ching Yu could react, another red light hit her. The red light couldn't get close to her body, but moved ten feet away. A piece of the snow in that area immediately collapsed, and being implicated by the subsidence, the rocks supporting Chen Yu were also on the verge of collapse and collapsed suddenly. She exclaimed and rolled towards the forest of knives involuntarily. Frightened, she tried hard to grab something to stop her body from falling. When she was less than five feet away from the forest of knives, she finally hugged a stone next to her, avoiding the fate of falling into the forest of knives and being cut into several pieces. However, her right leg still brushed the long knife on the outermost edge and was cut into pieces. A piece of flesh and blood was cut off. Her legs were numb at first, and then there was a burning pain, but Cheng Yu had no time to care about the pain in her legs. The closer she got to these long knives, the more dangerous she was. She endured the pain and let go of the rock that saved her life. He dragged his injured leg and tried to crawl forward, trying to get further away from the forest of knives. A pair of pearl-embroidered shoes appeared in front of her. Ching Yu raised her head and saw the woman in orange who she thought had left long ago standing on the snow with a smile on her face, standing in front of her. The inexplicable appearance of Dalin, that red light, she instantly understood what was going on and spoke with difficulty. Girl, why are you so bullying? The girl in orange was innocent. How can you say that I bullied you? I meant well. It's not fun to watch you climb the mountain alone, so I will add a little more thrills and excitement for you to make your climb more fun. When the words fell to the ground, a seal was formed between his fingers and a red light shot out and hit Cheng Yu. The earthquake caused by the red light caused a landslide of earth and rocks beneath her and Cheng Yu fell into the forest of knives again. This time, there was nothing around for her to cling to. 
At the moment of life and death, she could only actively step on the blade of the knife with her right foot to stop her fall. Use the momentum to prevent yourself from rolling into the forest of knives. But the blade was sharp and embedded deeply into the sole of the foot, and Ching Yu couldn't help but cry out in pain. The girl in orange patted her chest, as if scared. Fortunately, I cast the silence technique. Otherwise, how could it be that His Highness the Third Prince on the other side of the mountain heard your screams like this? He squatted down again, raised his hand, and touched it. Jade's face was pale. It hurts, doesn't it? The slightest movement of his right foot was met with heartbreaking pain. Chang Yu did not dare to move and allowed the girl to rub her face. Suddenly, sharp nails cut through her right cheek and blood gushed out. The pain in her right leg occupied Chang Yu's mind, so much so that she didn't feel the pain on her face. It wasn't until the blood dripping from her right cheek dyed the thin snow beneath her red that she vaguely understood that she had been disfigured. Ching Yu looked at the girl in a daze. The girl licked Tian's bloody fingertips with a look of realization on her face and happily shared her discovery with her. I know, it seems that this dragon scale will only prevent direct attacks that can cause serious harm to you. But like this it tortures you slightly, but it doesn't feel like an attack. Sensing Ching Yu's gaze, she curled her lips in displeasure. Why are you looking at me like this? A mortal is not qualified to have such a beautiful face. If I help you destroy it, maybe it's still a face. A great merit. As he spoke, he tentatively reached towards Ching Yu's earlobe. When he got close to the earlobe, he screamed and covered his hand as if he had been burned. Hmph, the girl said gloomily, rolled her eyes, and patted Ching Yu's undamaged left cheek. Hey, how about we discuss it? As long as you beg for mercy and give me all of His Highness's reverse scales, I will all let you go. At this moment, Cheng Yu felt pain all over his body and his mind was a little confused. After calming down, he realized what the girl was saying and pushed her hand away with difficulty. You won't let me go, no. Dragon scale bodyguard, if you want to kill, kill me. It will be even easier. The girl was slightly surprised and raised her beautiful eyebrows. You are very smart. You knew that I was going to kill you at this time. In that case, she held her chin and looked down at Ching Yu who was in a miserable state. Then when you first saw me, you should hide. Why not hide and instead come forward to seek my help? Cheng Yu waited for a long time before he had the strength to continue answering her question. Because I didn't expect that the immortal turned out to be so evil. He gasped, why, you want to kill me? The smile on the girl's face disappeared. When she wasn't smiling, her sweet face looked gloomy. She suddenly stretched out her two hands and firmly grasped Cheng Yu's shoulders and pushed her downwards. The blade penetrated deeper into Cheng Yu's foot, and she couldn't help but scream again. Under the extreme pain, she burst out with unprecedented strength, lifted the girl away, and struggled upwards, trying to get away from the blade. The girl did not get angry immediately, but slowly sat up from the snow, admiring Ching Yu's miserable state of screaming in pain and struggling, and a smile of enjoyment slowly appeared on the corner of her mouth. She sat there and looked at Cheng Yu with interest. Why should I kill you? Because you are not worthy of His Highness. It is a shame to have a mortal as your wife. I cannot let His Highness be humiliated like this. She held on. Cheeks, but you are right, immortals do not do evil. She shrugged, innocently, but I did not do evil either. You, immortal, are like ants to us immortals. Killing what's the difference between you and killing an ant? How can this be called evil? Chang Yu dragged her badly injured right leg and finally crawled away from the forest of swords. Although it was only two feet away, all her strength had been exhausted. Half of the sole of her foot was cut off by the blade during the struggle, leaving traces of blood on the place where she crawled. Chin Yu felt like he was dying of pain, but when he heard the girl's ridiculous words, even though he no longer had the strength to speak, he still managed to make a breathy sound. Even mortals, mortals are extremely, for you, inferior creatures, to torture and kill an lower creature, isn't it? An evil act? Brother Lian San knows. The girl shook her finger, 
Torturing and killing low-level spiritual beings is certainly an evil act, but to me, you are not even a low-level spiritual being. You are just an ant. Even you mortals, if you step on an ant to death, you will do you think you are doing evil? As for the Third Highness, she smiled softly. His Highness will never know about this. So, she formed a seal between her five fingers again. Go to hell. As the girl's words fell to the ground, the snow around Chenyu was covered in red light, falling one after another, and the snow and rocks above also rolled down. Chinyu didn't know why things would develop to this point. She never thought that she would die here, but at this time, she was so close to death. The girl's joyful laughter sounded above her head, and she felt the rocks and snow rolling beneath her. There was nothing more she could hold on to, and the moment finally came. She didn't even have time to hope that someone would come to save her, and she was dragged into the daggers by the falling earth and rocks. The sharp blade passed through her body and cut off her arm. She hung on the thickest long knife, and the blade cut off half of her waist. This time she didn't even have the strength to scream. Blood gushes out of the body like water. It's the sixth day. The punishment of being struck by an ice waterfall is no joke. Together with the punishment of being struck by lightning, it is ranked as the first torture in the nine heavens that does not hurt human life. If the Third Highness was in his heyday, it would not have been too difficult for him to accept the seven-day punishment. However, splitting the earth to create the sea and taming the four beasts in the mortal world consumed so much of his cultivation that by the sixth day, Han Pond was completely destroyed. Being dyed crimson by the dragon's blood, his highness seemed a little unable to hold on. The two guarding heavenly generals stood on the edge of the cold pool. Both of them were very worried. They forced themselves to persuade. Although the heavenly king ordered your highness to accept the punishment for seven days, it does not mean that your highness should be punished for seven days in a row. It is better for the humble officials to punish you first. How about your highness rest for two days before completing the remaining punishment? His Highness the Third Highness shook his head firmly and refused. The two god generals were worried, but they did not dare to disobey him. They were frightened, but stood by helplessly. In the ice waterfall, although His Highness was in a trance, there was still a glimmer of clarity left, and he was counting the time seriously, with fifteen hours, a quarter, a cup of tea, a cup of tea, a minute and four snaps of his fingers— he could escape from this ghost place and go to the mortal world has become a jade. On the last night in Xiao Jiaoqing's realm, he didn't wake her up when he left. I wonder if she resented him when she saw him gone when she woke up. Probably not. He smiled. She was always reluctant to deal with him, and she would not be willing to blame him. Just like that night, she understood everything. So she would ask him, You will leave when I fall asleep, right? But she didn't want him to worry, and immediately reassured him with duplicity, I'm not sad. She was the smartest, most sensible, and most considerate, and he never stopped thinking about his wife. He missed her so much. Fortunately, he would be able to see her again in fifteen hours, a quarter, and a cup of tea. The patience and pain were all worth it. Thinking of this, His Highness was a little happy, but for some unknown reason, there was a sharp pain in his heart, and he suddenly spit out a mouthful of blood. He never had any heart disease. How could he feel heartache? Could it be that the water blade torture caused something wrong with the internal organs? The Third Highness frowned tightly, and just as he was about to sense the source of the heartache and find out its cause, wind and thunder suddenly gathered on the second peak. You must be extremely focused to withstand the hour-long torture that follows. He cannot pass out, and must complete the punishment within seven days, and then go to the mortal world on time to attend the appointment. Jichen could only keep her sleeping for seven years, and she would definitely be sad if she couldn't see him when she woke up. The Third Highness calmed down, stopped thinking about other things, and concentrated on dealing with the attack of the water blade. At the same moment, on the other side of the mountain, behind the invisible wall, Zhao, she beat the barrier that trapped him like crazy. Yin Lin, let me out. Let me save her. I'm going to save her. Outside the barrier, Zhu Jin only looked at Zhao Shi coldly with solemn brows, without any sign of looseness in his expression. 
more than half a year ago, when Cheng Yu explained her agreement with Lian San to them, but Zhu Jin had no objection. Zhao Shi became confused. After all, Zhu Jin, no, In Lin, he had let go of harsh words with her. He said that he would never allow anyone or anything to stop him from protecting his majesty and returning to his throne. If the gods stood in his way, he would kill the gods. If the Buddha stood in his way, he would kill the Buddha. Jashi knew that In Lin must be perfunctory, but he didn't say anything at that time and just stayed silent. He wanted to see what In Lin would do next. Then soon, Ji Chen disappeared. Cheng Yu was confused about the loss of Jing Chen, but Zhao Shi understood that it must be Yin Lin's handiwork. Then, Yin Lin took the initiative to bring Chin Yu to this world to look for Lian Song. Zhao Shi was inexplicable by Yin Lin's move, so she followed him secretly. When passing through the Ruoma Gate, Zhao Shi saw Yin Lin taking the initiative to throw Cheng Yu away, and Zhao Shi somewhat understood his plan, but he was not sure. It wasn't until the girl in orange wanted to kill Ching Yu, but instead of protecting Ching Yu immediately, Yin Lin turned around and used a barrier to trap him who was following them. Did Zhao Shi finally confirm Yin Lin's plan? He to promote this situation. He wanted to personally create a life and death disaster for Ching Yu so that Zhu Ti could return to his rightful place. Yin Lin was doing his best to fulfill the duties of a divine envoy, and Zhao Shi had nothing to say about it, but even if he wanted to create a disaster for Cheng Yu, why bother making her so miserable? This was what he couldn't accept. But now, no matter how he attacks, it seems that he can't shake Yin Lin's heart. Zhao Shi tried to calm down. He took a deep breath, turned his head, and stopped looking at the girl who was hanging on the long knife as miserable as a rag. He suppressed the tremor in his voice and said to the young man in front of him, Yin Lin, you were really ruthless in the past, but now, don't you also know what love is? He looked directly into the young man's eyes. I heard that during your seventh reincarnation, you also really liked a woman. That woman, her name is Green Harrier, and you once had an oath of love with her. After she died, you would find her every time she reincarnated, and no matter who she reincarnated into, you would silently protect her. Seeing the young man's brow slightly twitching, Zhao, she struck while the iron was hot. If the person in that forest of swords today is a green harrier, I will never stop you. Eu is to me what the green harrier is to you. Even if I beg you, I won't. Stop me. Yin Lin looked at him for a long time. Did Zhao Huang tell you? Without waiting for his answer, he turned away and looked towards the distant mountains and said calmly, If you know the complete story, you should understand then it's Qingao. And I also ranked her behind the task of protecting the Lord Protector's return to his throne. Zhao Shi looked at Yin Lin in disbelief and saw Yin Lin closing his eyes. Zhao Shi suddenly remembered the night when Lin left the mortal world. He passed by the backyard and met Yin Lin and Yao Huang entrusting Li Muzhou. Dr. Li Muzhou of Renantong Medical Center is the reincarnation of Qingao in this life. At that time, Yao Huang who knew everything, asked Yin Lin, Will you come back? Yin Lin replied, I can't say for sure. Yao Huang sighed, If you just stay there and never come back, then you will never see Dr. Li again. Won't you feel sad? Yin Lin seemed to be frozen. After a long time, he returned to Yao Huang. When Qingao was about to die, she told me that she would not drink Wang Chuan water and would wait for me. I told her not to do that. She refused to drink Wang Chuan water. It is an act against heaven and will be punished by heaven. I have a heavy responsibility and cannot protect her from punishment. After I said those words, Qingo cried. I think she went to the underworld with hatred for me. See, because she chose me at that time, but I didn't choose her. Yao Huang was quiet for a moment, then patted Yin Lin on the shoulder. Now, do you regret your original choice? Zhao Shi remembered that Yin Lin closed his eyes like he did now. It doesn't matter whether I regret it or not. If I had it to do over again, I would still choose this way. It is difficult to like a mortal. Their lifespan is too short. Even if you can reincarnation, but after drinking the water of Wang Chuan, the so-called reincarnation is no longer the original person. Do you know that in every life, I try to find the shadow of Ching on these reincarnations, but every life... It's all just disappointment. 
So Yao Huang, don't fall in love with mortals, that will be very painful. After Yinlin's words, both of them were silent for a long time, and then Yao Huang asked the last question, which was also the question that Zhao Xi, who was hiding aside at the time, wanted to ask. After so many years, you are still if you can't forget Qingao. Have you ever thought that if you were not the envoy of God and did not need to bear the heavy responsibility of bringing His Majesty back, you and Miss Qingao would? How did Yin Lin answer at that time? Yes, he replied, I thought that if I could control myself better, it would be better if I didn't fall in love with Qingyao, but I never thought that I wouldn't be the envoy of Guyu Mountain. Recalling the conversation between Yin Lin and Yao Huang, Zhao, she suddenly became speechless. In the Forest of Knives, the girl was silent, not knowing whether she was dead or alive. This miserable scene made him extremely painful, but he could no longer say a word to Yin Lin. He has no position and no reason. But Yin Lin suddenly spoke. When she was born in this life, she was still an emotionally disabled child. She came to this world to learn the last kind of love, love between men and women and a lot of pain. Zhao, she looked at Yin Lin blankly. Yin Lin lowered his eyes and seemed sad. She lost her father when she was young, and then her mother. This was the first pain she needed to learn, the pain of bereavement. The friends she finally made as an adult died because of her. This is the second pain she needs to learn, the pain of losing a friend. Originally, she would marry Wu Nuosu, and Prince Minda would die young, but that is the third ein she needs to learn, the pain of losing a husband. She will also have a child who dies prematurely, which is the pain of losing a child. In the process, she will learn all the negative emotions that she has not really learned successfully in the past 16 lives. She will become more aware of anxiety, tension, anger, and depression, sadness, pain, fear, despair. The most important thing is that she will learn what resentment is. But this established perfect love disaster, life and death disaster, was destroyed by the water god, so I had to personally help she creates new calamities. He looked at Zhao Xi. I have never been heartless, and I can't bear with her as a mortal. Back in Lichuan, when I saw her in such pain because of the death of Dragonfly, I couldn't bear it, but I must bear it. Now if I let you out, you might be able to save her, but you may never be able to return to your throne. Emperor Zhao Xi, can you bear the consequences? Zhao Xi fell to the ground exhausted. Yin Lin squatted down, and after saying what he just said, his eyes turned red. He raised his hand, and the barrier was completely dark. As the black screen descended, he said to Zhao Xi with some pity, I know you can't bear to see her like this, and if you can't bear to look at her, then don't look at her. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The sound was a bit solemn and sticky, ringing in the ears, annoying and terrifying. Annoying because she wasn't supposed to hear the sounds, but they kept ringing in her ears. It was scary because it was the sound of her own blood dripping from her body. The more she listened to them, the closer she was to death. Ching Yu was in a daze. She was indeed dying. When hanging on the long knife, she only felt pain at first. The overwhelming pain dominated all her perceptions, making her want to die immediately. But she can't die. She didn't even hurt herself more to give herself a chance to end it happily. She opened her eyes and saw that the sky and the earth were blood red. She could vaguely make out that the shadow of the sun was not moving, but she felt as if a long time had passed. She had really been in pain for too long. When she lost the strength to even open her eyes, it seemed that the pain was finally gone, but her whole body was extremely cold. She vaguely understood that she was about to be freed. But the pain in the body faded away, but the pain in the heart surged. Do you really die like this? The person she wants to see most, she will never see him again in this life. Is that okay? The past of the two of them flew through her unconscious mind like a revolving lantern. The memories are warm, not so painful, not so cold. In the outdoor pavilion at the small ferry in Pingan City, a young man in white clothes with a black fan came in the wind and rain. He saw through her dress at the first sight, you are a girl. When they met again in the quaint craft shop, he looked at her with slightly narrowed eyes and raised eyebrows. From today on, I am your brother. 
On the night of Chinese Valentine's Day, he set off fireworks for her and said to her, seal these emotions and memories into your body again, and you can be carefree again. But Eu, I still want you to continue to grow up. In the underworld, he solved her knot and leaned over to encourage her in her ear. I only think about how smart our Eu is to be able to come back safely. Her sweetheart was so gentle, considerate, considerate and reliable that she couldn't help but get close to her third brother, who she relied on, was like a brother and a husband. He also had bad moments, avoiding her, not seeing her, kissing her, scaring her, saying harsh words to her, saying things like, don't come near me again, stay away from me. He had also broken her heart, but that was not what he wanted. He traveled all over the mountains and rivers to find her and said to her, I have been looking for you for a long time. I like you and cannot allow you to marry Wunyuosu. When Ji Mingfeng took her away, he chased her to the little Jiaoqing realm and confessed his love to her. What I want is not a momentary pleasure, but to stay with you forever. By the colorful stone river, he broke the earth for her, half-hugged her, pressed his forehead against hers, and leaned close to her ear. The person I love is you. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it. I'll prove it to you. Recalling this, I wanted to cry, but what rolled down my eyes was blood. She was a mortal and he was a god. She had always known that there was a huge gap between them. Even when he was making long-term plans for their future, she never believed that they would last forever. But she never imagined that their time together would be so short. She still remembers the completeness when she handed herself over to him when they expressed their feelings to each other in the populous Euphratica forest in Xiaojiao. She also remembers the joy and happiness she felt during the last month of getting along. Sadness, despair, regret, and the huge pain in her heart condensed into an emotion she had never truly experienced in her life, hate. Hatred lingered in her heart and wouldn't go away. If she had not obtained all that and had not been so close to happiness, she would not hate it so much at this moment. She doesn't ask for a long life with her sweetheart. She only wants for this life, one life, decades, compared with the tens of thousands of immortals' lifespans. This is nothing. Why can't she ask for it in just a few decades? Have to? If this was God's will, why would God be so cruel to her? Hatred spread like a vine. She hated the devil-like immortal in orange who personally tortured and killed her. She hated the sky and hated her life. The strong hatred drove her to cry out sadly. Ah. The mournful cry was blocked by the art of silence and could not be heard by the gods from all directions. However, the resentment in the mournful cry was felt by the souls of heaven and earth. For a time, the originally bright Tiangui mountain was filled with gloomy winds, and dark clouds rolled in from the sky. Pressing on the seven peaks of the Tianqi, the tide roared, and the lightning shook, and the thunder shook like a mountain. Zhao Shi listened carefully to the movement of Zenith. This is. Zhu Hibiscus looked gloomy and said nothing. Separated by a mountain, the two generals guarding the cold pool looked at the peak in shock and doubt. This wind and thunder does not seem to be the prelude to the punishment of the flowing blade. What is going on? The young man, who was nearly exhausted in the cold waterfall, also woke up from his semi-coma and looked up to the top of the mountain, his eyes full of doubts. Thick clouds were overwhelming the top of the seven peaks of the sky cabinet, and thunder and lightning were raging, but Ching Yu, who caused all this, didn't care about what was happening in the outside world. The hatred was like fire, rushing and burning in her body, making her extremely uncomfortable, but she also understood that it was only because of this unwilling hatred that she could stay awake. She was actually very, very close to death. It is said that when people die, they may see their past lives. When the last bit of blood in her body was drained, many memories that did not belong to her suddenly poured into her mind. It seems to be her past life. She saw it. In her first life, she was an idiot. She couldn't speak or move. She was like a wooden person, let alone ordinary human emotions. She didn't understand anything at all. The tribe saw her as unlucky and wanted to burn her to death, but the widowed mother went crazy and saved her from the burning rack, taking her into hiding. 
The mother and daughter depended on each other for life, and although life was difficult, it was still manageable. But one day my mother fell ill. That winter, the widowed mother knew she couldn't make it through, so she exchanged her only money for flour, made a large pot of cakes for her, placed it next to her, and cried while caressing her dementia, I can live one more day. Live one more day. Two days later, her mother died. She guarded her mother's body and shed tears for the first time in her life. In those tears, she learned the most important emotion as a human being, the deep love of licking a calf, how Tien is incompetent. In her second life, she still had some dementia. She was abandoned since she was a child and was picked up and raised by a kind-hearted tenant farmer. When she was 10 years old, an old tenant farmer slashed her face with a knife, saying that in such a world, a daughter from a poor family with such rare appearance would inevitably suffer disaster, so it was better to destroy it. What does the demented child know? She only remembers the pain of the blade cutting through the flesh and uses this to judge that the old man does not like her. But when he was 14 years old, his hometown was hit by a big flood and the floating driftwood could only save one person's life. The old man gave her a chance of survival without hesitation and pushed her onto the driftwood with all his strength. But it was swept away by the torrent. She stared blankly at the figure of her old grandfather disappearing into the flood and shed tears again. In those tears, she understood the complexity of emotions in this world and learned what kind of hurt and admiring love are. In her third life, she was finally no longer an idiot and had basic emotions. She was a seemingly normal child who grew up normally and had friends. It was an era when women could also join the army. She joined the army with her friends. During a mission to reconnoiter an enemy camp, the two of them were accidentally discovered. In order to protect her, her friend made a bait first to divert the pursuing enemy troops and finally died tragically in the hands of the enemy. When they parted, her friend told her that if she could survive, she must take her place and live a more meaningful and valuable life. In that life, she learned what a burden was and spent her whole life learning what it means to be a human being and the value of being a human being. The fourth life, the fifth life, the sixth life. She has lived through 17 lives in total. This life is her 17th. It is also her last life. After 17 lifetimes of hard training, she finally learned all the emotions a mortal should have and gained a complete personality. Chang Yu suddenly opened his eyes. The moment she opened her eyes, the mortal body hanging on the long knife turned into a golden light. The golden light was very different from the ordinary golden light. It seemed to contain thousands of colors and was extremely dazzling. The golden light spread rapidly, covering thousands of miles of ice fields in an instant. Wherever the light reached, the thick clouds receded, the thunder stopped, and the seven peaks of the sky cabinet where nothing could grow suddenly bloomed with thousands of snow lotuses in an instant. The place in the middle of heaven and earth is the land of Zhongzha. Zhongzha is the place where the ancient gods disappeared and fell asleep. The gods of the eight wilderness are not allowed to set foot in it. But at this time, the land of Zhongzha, which had been silent for hundreds of thousands of years, suddenly heard the sound of loud and melodious bells. There is only one boundary in Zhongzha, and there is a fairy bell whose sound can be heard in all the wilderness after ringing. The boundary is Guyu Mountain in the middle of Zhongzha, and the fairy bell is the mercy bell on the top of Guyu Mountain. The sound of the Gugu Hong bell continued to ring throughout the eight wastelands, and the golden light also spread into the distance with the sound of the bell and soon covered the entire world. Just when all the creatures in the eight wastelands were amazed by this vision, a vague Dharma voice came out from the immortal golden light, Gu Guangzhu Ti, in the name of the God of Light, set a curse for the heaven and earth, all things born in Yangguang. If the light exists, then all things in the world will not be destroyed. In the name of human and God, Gai Zuri set up a curse for the eight wastelands. Billions of mortals will be protected by Gugue, and if there are any living beings in the eight wastelands, anyone with ill intentions towards the human race will not be allowed to pass through the Ruoma Gate. The sound of the Dharma is subtle and can be heard by all living beings. 
From heavenly kings to earthly immortals, those who heard the sound of the Dharma all knelt down and worshipped. Everyone was shocked and couldn't contain themselves. The God of Light, which had disappeared for 210,000 years, has returned. End of Lotus Step Chapter 32 Book 2